facing a lot of questions about where to invest their time and energy and money in terms of their own technology, especially from a marketing or publishing point of view. So they both have websites, of course, and that's a key distribution mode. But on the other hand, we're moving into this world so quickly where mobile is the, the internet. I think companies and, and businesses like theirs are really faced with this question of how much priority should you spend on maintaining and improving a website as opposed to focusing on mobile. And I, I think you're an interesting guy to ask this because really both of your businesses that you've started are basically entirely mobile. So, so is that a statement that you would basically say symbolizes what you think everybody should do? Or how do you think about, say, Scott's problem of should he invest to improve what he, he concedes is a relatively creepy website that he hasn't spent much time on in the last couple of years, right? Yeah, at least I'm pulling up if you're here. <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and, uh, and also, of course, yeah. should, should he just go for mobile and just build a really cool mobile? And the question is really coming from, um, we were talking about my love for Square and how much it's done for me, but on the flip side, to prove I'm not a shill for, for Jack, I've never tweeted anything. And I have a business that is so built for it. We have a food truck. We have a store that changes flavors every week. I should be engaging with my customers. I engage through Facebook, but I know that's static. So my question was, what, what, what's the next, is there a next Facebook? Will Facebook be here for another 20 years? I, my, my daughter, my first year daughter's on Instagram now. I'm not sure what that's all about, but should I? As a business owner, I should, yes. As, as, a, good, as a parent, I should. As a business owner, I don't know. But, uh, so this, that was my question, and, and obviously I need to, you know, invest the time in figuring this Twitter thing out. I think it's a such a lean, challenged business right now, how, 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 how much, how many resources should I put to uh, something where there really isn't a model yet to monetize them? So, you mean mobile in particular? Or, or yeah. the web as well? I mean, you're really facing that mode of the web end. But what about the mobile thing? And then let's get to Scott's question about you know future promotion of technology. Um, the, the way I would think about it is it's not necessarily about mobile versus web. It's about meeting your customers where they are. So more and more, you know, these devices are be, being carried around everywhere. And when we started Twitter, we were excited and inspired by the idea that if we limited the text constraint to 140 characters, we could fit in a 160 character envelope of SMS, which meant that uh, anyone around the world with a 5 dollar cell phone, even a cell phone shared between a tribe of 20 people, could participate in global conversation. And they could do so for, for free. So we optimized for where we thought people were and had a graceful degradation path up and down. So. Um, if you just had a five dollar cell phone, you could have a conversation with Justin Bieber, who will have a gold iPhone, right, in, in the middle of uh, California, and uh, and that's truly empowering and levels the playing field, and, and that was what's important to us. And programming for SMS didn't take a lot of our resources; it was just the right focus. So the first question to ask is, where are, where is your audience? Where where are your customers? The same is true for Square. You know, our co-founder Jim McKelvey, Jim McKelvey is a Glass artist, he couldn't sell a piece of glass art at, a, at an art fair when he was out. Um, more and more people are carrying these supercomputers in their pockets, and uh, you can pick them up fairly cheap right now. Um, and there's no way to go from that phone, that device, to a sale. So, what's the smallest piece of hardware that we could build that actually not only worked on Jim's iPhone, but also worked on any Android device? And, um, what we what we built was through the headphone jack because it turns out that a credit card is just the same technology as a cassette tape, and the headphone jack is actually a microphone jack as well. So if you plug that in, they can listen to the audio from the credit card and convert it into a number, and then we can bring that to the bank and verify that funds are on the card and deposit those funds into the seller's account. So um, we recognize that people weren't necessarily on the web; they weren't wanting to take their computers out to the art fair or to the farmers market or with them while they were uh, doing their flight instruction or piano teaching or whatnot. But they did have a phone. And the most important thing was, it's a commodity device, and people already knew how to use it. So, uh, you know, there's all these credit card terminals in the world, which I said, you have to learn how to use, but people's two-year-olds are teaching them how to use an iPad, and how to use an iPhone, and how to use an Android. 
So what's the simplest thing that we can do to plug in and actually make that the register so it runs your entire, your entire business? And, uh, and that really focused us. So we said, we're not going to build anything for the computer. We're not going to build anything for the web. We're just going to build the simplest thing that we can for the phone, which meets where our customers are, meets where the sellers are, and where we see this interesting intersection. So um, that, that's how I would, I would filter you know, how you think about resources. I, I do believe people are consuming more content, interacting more out of their pocket, and I don't think that's a trend that, that goes away. I think to the point of Instagram and um, you know, technologies like Snapchat, and there's a new photo sharing app which I'm in love with, it's called Frontback. Front back. Front back. All of them. Uses the front. It takes two front pictures. Front camera and the back, yeah. back camera. It takes two pictures at once. And these things look sometimes immediately like uh, ridiculous little toys. I mean, on a very superficial level. But I think it's the um, I think it's the responsibility of every entrepreneur and everyone who's um, innovating to play with all these things because it always brings you new ideas. It always brings you new perspective. And it might do so in such a way that it really changes the course of your business. Um, Snapchat, I, th I think, is a stunning company in technology where they went from zero uh, people using it to sending 350, 350 million images per day um, over this service. And uh, it's so fundamental to uh, the phone itself that it's become the camera application for most of the people that use it. Um, so instead of opening the camera app on the phone, they open Snapchat because what Snapchat figured out is again, where do customers want to be? What do they actually want to do with this technology? When someone takes a photo, what's the first thing you want to do with it? You want to share it with someone. So what's the simplest way to get there? Open up the camera immediately, take a picture of the very next screen, this is who you share it to, and then down, you take another picture. Right? So that's the magic of that technology. And if we approach our businesses and, you know, first, what do we want to build? Who are our customers? And then where they're going to be, it really focuses your development and really, uh, you know, helps you get a lot of time back to, to focus on the